All right. Hello. Good morning, everyone. Good to see you. Paul Tranny here. Uh, back from vacation. Good to see you, my friends. I see you there, Stoney, Biola, uh, Umacorn, Marsha. If you're joining me elsewhere, thanks for hanging out. Appreciate you guys. Um, I want to say hello. Cool. Um, yeah, there's a lot going on. Hey, you know what? I've been on vacation the past week, so I might have missed some things. Maybe you can fill me in in chat. That would be awesome. <laughs> so let me know what's good, what's going on. Uh, Michelle, thank you for that message as well. Um, so let's just dive into this. Yeah, I'm, I am kind of tan. I'm just like happy to be here. It's a good day to be alive. Um, and good day to talk about our guests, as you can see. Right. Boop. I forgot my left from my right already. Uh, but you can see off to the side, we have uh, the wonderful Cody Bear. She's uh, been live streaming since yesterday into today, as well as Alexis Bustos. So uh, you probably know Cody Bear's work. So that's Monday and Tuesday today. We'll kind of check out her portfolio. You probably know what she's all about. Maybe, maybe not, but uh, she does amazing work. So um, that's what's going on, right? So again, uh, Cody's up first. You can see her awesome work. Just go to, of course, Cody Bear. Uh, you can find her anywhere. So chances are that URL, she probably has that uh, um, social media handle everywhere. So if you're looking to get a hold of her, she's probably pretty easy to get a hold of. Okay. We also have Alexis Bustos on Behance. Uh, let's actually jump out to her site really fast. And. Um, as you guys saw a second ago, she's creating an interactive card game uh, mobile app with, uh, uh, that's, what, that's what we're doing with her, and what is happening there. So you can see right up there, uh, live. It's gonna link out to sort of like some of her live work. She's been with us before, so that's super cool. Um, so yes. Yeah, you're gonna hear bam a lot, Kellen. That is, Probably right. And that's just when I really like something. I'm like, bam, look at that. Isn't that awesome? So, um, of course, Wednesday and Thursday, I'm excited. So that's Monday and Tuesday. So second part today for each of those. Uh, and then Wednesday and Thursday, we have, uh, this is going to be awesome. In the morning, we have uh, Anna McNaught and Jesus Ramirez kind of do a, a tag team of photo compositing. So I don't know, two of my favorite people, like I, th I think they're awesome. I think they're one of the, the two last people that I hosted in uh, at the Adobe Live studio in San Francisco um, before things happened last year. So that was like one of my, I don't know, I think it was like one of my final sort of segments um, that we had there. So anyways, it's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm sure it's gonna be a blast and I'm sure you're gonna learn something, which is gonna be cool. Uh, and then we'll get into some geometric animal logo design with Ben Stafford. So again, we got some heavy hitters here that I'm super excited about as well. Um, and if you're not f familiar with Anna and Jesus's work, hey, get familiar with it, it's gonna be awesome. Yeah, Anna and Freddie, Sean, you're exactly right. Freddie, as he's known. Just like him, so we have that in common that uh, his family calls him Freddie. My family, uh, at least people have known me a long time, call me my, by my middle name, which is Ryan. So anyways, Anna McNaught's work, check her out. Awesome, Jesus, of course, runs the Photoshop training channel, does some pretty amazing work as well. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, ben Stafford, so again, we got all these heavy hitters. I don't know specifically, well, I don't have a specific illustration for what he's gonna make, because he hasn't made it yet. Um, but again, he's gonna do some cool animal uh, illustrations or a geometric animal logo specifically and you can see yeah he's pretty good at those geometric animals as you can tell right here so uh, yeah Steve you're exactly right we went out uh, we, yes we did we went out and we had a, a light uh, it's just basically an LED light that you can obviously used for photography so you can dial in to different colors and saturations and all sorts of things so anyways i think it's going to be a fun week i'm gonna be checking that out later on in my copious spare time and uh let's yeah you're not going to get any work done have it on in the background i think it's going to be cool and it's fun when you have people that are going to learn from one another and i think that's going to happen a lot as well but let's dive into some more news shall we
All right. That's right. Uh, so yeah, let's kind of take a look at news of what we have going on. And again, you might know more than I have. I was in I was in San Juan and on some islands and stuff like that. So I had no idea what was going on. I shut off everything, which is the best type of vacation you can have. So I came back refreshed. Um, but uh, what's kind of happened this week, is, and something we're constantly working on is like understanding. We know people use our software too. Like you could do anything, make look any, make anything look realistic. But we're also concerned about content on content authenticity. So, <clears throat> and again, so we have this lovely deep uh, deep fake task force that's basically developed with. Uh, um, Adobe, of course, and other large tech companies. So there's a deep fake task force act, which basically says that, you know, um, bringing together nations. Uh, uh, so basically verifying the validity and truthfulness of digital content. That's what it's all about. So yes, we want people to use our software. We want we want people to use it for good is what it comes down to. So yes, there is a task force out there like that. And uh, we want to say, hey, when you take a photo, if it's an authentic photo, we want to make sure people know that it's authentic and it hasn't been messed with. So anyways, I think that's good news in my opinion. So another good news things that's happening is we now have registration open for um, uh, Adobe Max, right? So uh, Adobe Max is free and it is online, as you probably know. Um, and that's just one article. Thank you for posting that, Sam. Uh, so um, yeah, so basically we just opened up a registration yesterday. So the goal is to go in and kind of build out your schedule just like in any real conference. But it is online and it is absolutely free. So you just hit that register button and start building your classes, right? So again, use your Adobe ID to sign in. Uh, but here's just a sample of some of the speakers. I don't know if you guys are interested in there. Maybe you got your favorites, like Aaron Draplin, of course, amazing, right? Casey Neistat, maybe you're a fan of his, right? Um, Yuko Shimizu. Um, yeah, so a ton of people, as you can see here, I'm just scrolling down. But explore it for yourself. Lauren Hom, who's awesome. Of course, Mark Heaps, Brian Wood. Yeah, some of the heavy hitters um, that champion Adobe products as well. That's kind of these two folks so yeah it's gonna be a lot of fun here's a recap from last year you guys get the idea and uh yeah you got it it's free stuff i could have filed this under free stuff by the way uh which would have been a good idea but hey you know what it's also under news as you can tell so go ahead and jump in yeah Scotty Young. Yeah, let me know who your favorites are. Scotty Young. I do not know Scotty Young. Uh, oh, cool. Michelle's on top of it. Good to hear. All right. Fantastic. Well, that's what I have for news. That's like the important stuff. I also want to get into sort of what's new for creatives as well, right? So I think we got a lot of cool work coming out by you guys, the community, and uh, just the design community as a whole. All right, welcome back, everybody. Uh, good to see you here. Um, yeah, I just wanted to highlight some cool work. And this work I wanted to post a little bit ago, um, but I love this <clears throat> photography by uh, Asharaful Arafin. And maybe I, oh, sorry, let me just switch screens. Maybe I relate to this work, but here's some just amazing photography of his. Yeah, monsoon season. You would think rain would give you just like horrible color and uh, would not make for a good photo. But look at his work, it's just amazing, I must say, right? So again, this is monsoon season. Um, let's see, monsoon in the city. Let's actually scroll up to the top 
Uh, I don't know where this is specifically, I guess, is what I was just looking for. But we can click through this and see these gorgeous photos just to inspire you because like, you know what? You say, no, it's not a perfect day. Um, the light doesn't look right. And this guy will prove you wrong. He'll be like, yeah, I can make anything look good. That's what this person does. But each photo has warm and cool tones. You're of course gonna get the cool tones from the rain, but you get that pop of color or that, this kind of like bringing out these warm tones, even though it's a very overall cold uh, picture, right? So again, I think that's usually what makes a good com composition. Uh, is when you have a, a good balance, right? Where you have some warm tones on your subject and then everything else just has this fun atmospheric look. So anyways, awfully fun. Great photos, you get the idea. Scroll up to the top from Asharaful Arafin, by the way. So yeah, those are fantastic. Maybe I relate to them because uh, there was a storm in, uh, uh, where was I? Puerto Rico and there was a like a, um, uh, yeah tropical storm and uh, our part of our trip was delayed due to rain. So that's probably why I relate to this. But here's another good thing you wanna do is you wanna look overall at images and kind of what people are pushing out there and see kind of what the current trends are as well. So that's why this is really helpful as I click through just a couple of these others, especially these last two. Um, this one uh, by Ayeshi this anime in Tokyo. Again, here's taking a photo and going the opposite with it. Like, look at this. Look at how amazing this is. And again, it's been messed with with Lightroom and Photoshop, but look at how awesome this is. Like we're going the exact opposite when it comes to photography. Look at those colors, right? Isn't that amazing? Like I want her presets if she's using those in Lightroom. And ultimately I wanna know what she's doing because it, it looks like just an awesome illustration, like gorgeous work. Right, again, look at that, making that blue pop, right? This just looks so good. I don't know, I'm just like really into this, you know? At first glance, I was like, is this an illustration or is it not? Again, just clicking through some of these. And again, we saw sort of monsoon season compared to say Tokyo in the summertime and just the drastic difference you get between these two portfolios, which again, I agree with you, Bliss. I love the colors. You guys get the idea. I just wanted to highlight a couple, right? And you can see uh, Aishi and I could probably paste that in chat. What am I even doing? I'm so sorry. Oh. Let's get that in there. There we go. Boom, there's that last one, just pasted it in a chat. Um, and you can check that out, which is awesome. Um, but you start to notice trends because I think this is a big trend that's happening is like with these, I don't know, like, you'll notice these colors and these shapes that are 3D. I just feel like I notice a lot of this work lately. Um, and this is actually, let me jump back. This is from multiple owners, but it's the Microsoft Flipgrid, backgrounds for the Microsoft Flipgrid, right? And this is done with C4D, but we can click through and just see these colors, right? Made in 3D, uh, but could look like it's coming from Illustrator as well. And I don't know, I just was really into it. That's all. Just trying to get you guys inspired, right? A lot of architecture is what I'm kind of showing today but really like focusing on that color, which I think is cool. All right, let's get out of that. Flip good grid backgrounds. Hello, Danny, how you doing? And yes, Michelle, very cool. Pink is the new blue, right? I'm all about pink, man. It's like, I'm into pink and teal and all those colors. I think we could use uh, some wonderful pastels in our life, which is why I probably lean that way, okay? But now let's take a look at applying that. And um, let's actually just talk about, let's jump right into it, into pro tips. Shall we? There we are. Let's talk about pro tip or pro tips is what it should say there. Uh, but essentially we wanna jump in and just show you some things that you don't know. And this is like what I try to do is I try to stump the pros. I try to stump like, you know, Reverb Mike and Sam and uh, some other, you know, Bruce, people in chat that I know you guys know a lot. So I'm like, I try to find things that maybe you, you do or don't know about. The things that you don't know about ultimately is what I'm going for, just to be honest with you. 
Uh, first thing I want to point out actually really fast is uh, Creative Cloud Desktop app, as you can see right there. And I'll show you the pros and cons really fast. Let's jump in here. Do, 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 change my screen. Let's do it. Oh, that's a sweet image. Look, that's sweet. I'm just going to, yeah. I'm just going to output this really fast because I think of this is such a nice image. <laughs> it's like I'm surprised. It's like, yeah, that's turned out pretty well. Uh, that's used sky replacement. That's just my surfing JPEG, right? Or whatever. But ultimately, you might use this and drop this photo into your libraries panel, right? And try to sort that accordingly. That's what I usually do is I try to kind of get things cleaned up. I have to zoom in on my screen. I'm like, where's that one little photo? And I don't like these little thumbnails. So a lot of times if I'm managing and looking for content, I'll actually use the desktop apps. We'll jump out here. Here it is. Zoop. We'll go to um, your work. Right up here, we'll go to your work and then you can click on uh, your libraries, right? And then you have your cloud documents. I'm in libraries, so I was just looking at, um, was it nature? Either way, I can select nature and I can now see like, instead of ever having everything like really small, right, I can crank that up to as big as I want it, right? So that's typically, and you can see this lovely library, I even have things organized and just so, I was probably avoiding real work, which is why I put this together. But I could take this surfing image, right, so I can add things, right? Just click right there, add item, and drop it in there like so. So you can add things from your desktop, you guys get the idea. Yeah, you need to clean it up for your stream. So yeah, Sean, you use it all the time. That's awesome. Um, so this is one thing that will happen is like, you're, I do need to clean up my library some more because uh, yeah, there's a lot going on uh, with it. And um, I actually, yeah, need to get rid of some of that stuff. And on that note, when you do need to get rid of things, uh, let's do this. Let's take a look. We could take, and I really don't want to delete anything in here unless I find duplicates. So let's just take this and let's delete this item. When you delete something, it actually does not get deleted forever, right? It actually goes into your deleted folder, if you will. So from there, you could permanently delete if you want to. And some of this stuff I'll do from the library. Let's go to assets. How much time I got? Oh, this always goes by way too fast. Let me just show you this real fast. Go in here, we go to your files, for instance, or your libraries. But in here, you can see your deleted files, for instance. So you could go in the browser and then delete things permanently. So you can jump in, select what you want, right? Permanently delete right there, delete permanently, right? So just keep that in mind if you do need to clean it up. Same thing for libraries right? You can go into your libraries, uh, what's deleted from your libraries, and then just delete some of these, some of those images. And now you know. Let's take a look at some other things really fast. There's more things I want to talk about in here, because you could view fonts super easily in here as well and reactivate them. I don't have that kind of time, you know. Uh, if anything, we can go into all apps. We can go to, um, let's go to manage fonts, just to show you where that's at. Like right in here, you can see all the fonts that I currently have installed, deactivate, and right over here, previously active, right? Because it will deactivate some fonts that you haven't used in a bit. So uh, you guys get the idea and you can browse more right there. But what I want to do, so I want to go back, don't mind me, uh, jump out to Adobe Color and this is kind of where I'll land with a lot of this. I have skeleton. all right. Does it save disk space? Um, that is a, yes, it will save disk space. Yeah, Bruce, it will save disk space. Your hard drive space. So, yeah. Um, finding those files on your hard drive is another whole thing. We don't want you licensing images and then sharing those with other people like, you know, um, who, who don't own the license. So that's the problem. 
uh, we run into if we like give you a folder with all the images that you bought and then you're sharing them with other people. I don't know, it's kind of an issue. All right, so uh, right in here, accessibility tools. Let's talk about color. We know Adobe Color right here. Uh, I wanted to go from say our color wheel, which we can see, that looks fine. We can go into accessibility tools and there's a couple things in here. We have a contrast checker and a colorblind safe. So this is what it does. It says, hey, you know what? Uh, C and D are in conflict, which means if you are colorblind, you're not gonna be able to differentiate these two colors. So what it's saying is like, try to separate those out, Paul. See, as soon as I separate them out, boom. Okay, so now if you're colorblind, you can distinguish those colors uh, apart from one another much better. But that's what happens, like showing me, let's see if it shows me on this graph. Yeah, you definitely get that, that this sort of, uh, this negative sign, if you will, saying, hey, you know what? You need to push these colors apart more in order to differentiate the two for people that are colorblind. I think it's up to like, I don't know, up as high as like 10% in the male population. Contrast checker as well, right in here, saying, hey, whoa, buddy, your contrast ratio could be good, could be bad. Let's take this down. It already gives me this little um, box with a line through it saying, whoa, buddy, you got you to mess with your contrast, my friend. <clears throat> Excuse me. There we go, right down here. We can see at, uh, for regular text, it fails. At larger text, it passes. So that's all it's saying. It's like, get this adjusted until it passes. And this now says there's enough contrast between the, the text and the background to pass across the board for, uh, you know, populations that I have a hard time with contrast. So that's all. Still can't differentiate between the two. Oh, Kellen, are you, um, I don't know if you're colorblind or whatever, but this would be really cool to, it would be super interesting to kind of view some of the stuff if you are, uh, you know, if you are colorblind or whatever the case may be. So anyways, that's all I was trying to do is show you some tips with Creative Cloud on the desktop app, right? Adding, viewing files, organizing files, jumping out to additional apps that you uh, may or may not know that you have access to and what they can do. But let's go on to free stuff because there's free stuff out here. You can actually go to um, Marketplace, for instance, right? And there's some free plugins, things like that. But I wanted to get in some more free stuff because I think this is kind of neat too. So we're going to end with free stuff, folks. Let's do it real fast. There we go. My big head's in the way. Let's move me out of the way a little bit. I adjusted my camera at the last minute. But we also have free stuff. You can go to adobestock.com, excuse me, stock.adobe.com forward slash free, as you can see. But I wanted to kind of also focus on raw pixel, which I think is pretty darn cool. It's the very top one right here. So feel free to do a screenshot of this if you want to. Oh, you, Kellen, you were joking. <laughs> I seriously, you, need, you kind of need somebody who does have a problem distinguishing colors and, um, <clears throat> You know, ask them like what they think of certain colors. So uh, any one of these uh, sites that offer images that you have to pay for, whatever, photo sharing sites are usually gonna have a free section. We can see that, we can sort through the free assets. I personally like this public domain tab they have right here. So on rawpixel.com, uh, you can go to public domain and now these were public domain, so they actually have the right to put these out on a site. Um, again, for free. You know I'm huge into flowers. Here we have our flower assets and uh, a ton of uh, Robert J Jacob Gordon's work in this case, which I think is pretty cool. Yeah, does it take advantage, take into account what color space you're working in, CMYK versus RGB? Um, not to my knowledge. Oh yeah, here we go. We could change this right over here. Let's go to CMYK. Good question. We'll change it to CMYK. We'll push these colors back together. So yeah, your color space is switchable off to the side. Great question. Rob, you are the man. So again, that's your free stuff. Now you know you could do a search, of course, like I was doing over here under public domain. Um, images or boards, but we can just do flowers. You guys get the idea. Okay, free flowers, right? Off to the side, nice little sorting features as well. 
um, stock has a lot of this as you can expect as well. So uh, that is it for me, everyone. Um, it's good to be back and uh, hopefully you guys got something out of this. I try to look for things to stump you in the software, <laughs> but also hopefully some things you didn't know about, but you should be all caught up and feel confident about the week, knowing you know everything. That's right. So thanks so much, Rob, Sam, Michelle, Marsha, uh, Robin, Rob, everyone, appreciate you guys. Uh, and also I can even leave you with, of course, our lovely schedule because we have Cody Bear up next, but actually we also have uh, daily creative challenges today as well. So thanks so much for joining. I'll see you guys in a bit.